Hi, my name is Philip Wolfers. I'm a psychologist and I specialise in assessments, including a whole lot of learning areas uh, such as dyslexia. For the diagnosis of dyslexia, I uh, need to attend the office for about an hour and a half and uh, that includes a one-on-one -on -one testing situation with the child which takes about half an hour and that includes a number of different things such as things you'd expect, a bit of spelling, a bit of reading and so on and a number of other things that you wouldn't expect but are also related to dyslexia. Uh, it also includes at the beginning uh, an interview where I'll talk to the child and find out the history and the background and a little bit about the situation. Um, I'll be asking you to fill in a couple of surveys for me to give me a lot of background information that I also use in the diagnosis and at the end I'll sit down with the parent um, and in, with the child if they're old enough, if they're 15 or so, and go through what's happened on the day, what the numbers all mean, what it looks like, what the diagnosis is and what my recommendations are. So by the time you leave you know everything that's, uh, that's taken place. Well, a diagnosis uh, for dyslexia is quite a specific thing where a parent will come to me or perhaps an adult and say, I think I have dyslexia and we'll target that in, uh, in an assessment so that in the, in the period all we'll be looking at is whether you have dyslexia or not. When I use the word assessment, I'm referring to a much more open-ended process uh, where we'll start with a general cognitive assessment and then if there are specific pointers as to what else might be, there may be other things which need to take place. Um, so that if someone comes in saying, I just want to find out, then we would call that an assessment. Whereas if you start with the idea that uh, dyslexia is likely, we would target that and the diagnosis is what comes at the end. As far as cost is concerned, if it's just the diagnosis for dyslexia, then it would be less than a general assessment or a specialist assessment which might include a lot more time. Um, for the dyslexia assessment, the prices start at just under $400 and might go through to about $600 depending if there's more involved and, and uh, other factors. And for the general assessment, prices start at closer to $700 and go on up from there. The assessment or diagnosis for dyslexia is definitely claimable as a Medicare rebate if you have been referred specifically by a general practitioner or another doctor with a mental health care plan referral. It's a very specific kind of referral and then the, the, the medical practitioner is asking for this to take place and therefore it's claimable as a Medicare item. The uh, Parts of the assessment that are done by me, or the, or the diagnosis for dyslexia, fall under the categories that many health funds allow. And therefore, although I can't speak specifically about anyone's particular health plan or the cover that they have, it may be that you will find it's available with a private health care fund as well. There is a specific diagnostic tool for dyslexia, uh, the dyslexia screening test, and for adults, the dyslexia adult screening test which is an English test, um, Australia hasn't developed one separately. Now I know of many psychologists who screen for dyslexia by carrying out a cognitive test such as the WISC plus a number of ability tests, reading, spelling and so on. What that does is give a measure of the difference between the child's ability and their performance on those tasks. However, what it doesn't do is look at the causality of that difficulty. And so it's a bit of a blunt instrument as far as I'm concerned in that developmental delay and other things might be missed, uh, whereas dyslexia, the dyslexia screening tests, has a number of different measures, all of which relate specifically to dyslexia, as the research indicates. Um, and also the, the other approach, doing a full cognitive test and a full ability test, is much more time consuming, much more wearing on the child and costs a lot more. For a dyslexia assessment, for a dyslexia diagnosis, the minimum age is six and a half and that largely takes into account the fact that before that age they can't really expect any child to have enough reading, spelling and so on that a diagnosis would be accurate. Uh, and then after that, then the sky's the limit. But with a dyslexia assessment, there is a report. This is a summary report 
and that uh, gives the background of what took place and then recommendations um, and depending on the situation and the age of the child these recommendations could be for home or school or for a tertiary institution or even for a workplace. The benefit of having a diagnosis is multifold. The first thing is um, one could have the idea that a child is a so-called slow learner or not very intelligent or something like that uh, whereas dyslexia is not correlated with intelligence at all and you could have a very bright child uh, who could be a very quick learner in many ways but is dyslexic and therefore in some ways has difficulties. So the first thing is to, to have an understanding both for the parents and for the child and if you understand that things are, that, that this, whatever the situation is is called dyslexia A it gives you an understanding and B it gives you a way to look at uh, management or therapy to help with the dyslexia. Further, uh, many schools uh, enjoy having a diagnosis for a child because it may give them access to disability provisions and funding. Um, and at, at later on in age, uh, for an adult, it can solve a conundrum that's been bothering them all their life. Uh, it can help with special uh, disability provisions for the high school certificate and also special provisions at university level. And I've also had situations in which people in the workplace have been looked after by their uh, employer uh, when they've been able to provide a, a diagnosis of dyslexia and some recommendations. Dyslexia differs from some of the other learning difficulties in that it is a perceptual problem or a problem with which perceptions are interpreted by the brain. Uh, developmental delay is usually a matter which affects the whole of learning and it affects intelligence and it affects the um, relative age development of the learning abilities of the child. Whereas dyslexia is simply something which affects a person right through their life, has no impact on intelligence or ability in other areas. Um, there's also a, a large area in which there is interest at the moment, which is to do with auditory processing or central auditory processing disorder. Now, uh, People with dyslexia often have some element of auditory processing difficulties. However, it's not central auditory processing disorder, which is treatable in a completely different way and needs to be assessed in a different way. Um, dyslexia is a category all on its own, and there are many high achieving, highly intelligent dyslexics who simply have areas of their lives where they don't function as well as other people. There is another condition which is known as dyscalculia, which is otherwise maths dyslexia, and it's specifically to do with the way a child perceives and works with numbers. Now, there's a fair bit of overlap because many dyslexic children will also have a form of dyscalculia as part of the package. However, there are some for whom what we might call dyslexia is just dyscalculia in that they only have difficulties in the numerical area. Uh, if a child with that form of, of dyslexia comes to see me, it will be reasonably obvious, first of all, in the history and the work that's produced and the answers that are given by the parents, and also which parts of the dyslexia screening test show up as having difficulties. For the older student, uh, a dyslexia diagnosis can be very helpful. I have a lot of uh, parents who approach me with children who are in their late teens and who are approaching the high school certificate. And the disability provisions that are allowed for the high school certificate will allow for dyslexia in many cases. So therefore, it's well worth having a child assessed at the age of 15, 16, 17 in case uh, it's going to help them gain extra time or other provisions for the high school certificate. It's also uh, very useful for university students because many university have very, uh, universities have very good provisions for dyslexics. For example, allowing tests to be taken orally rather than written. Uh, that would be an example of the kind of provisions that, that they may allow. Dyslexia isn't a, an illness or a disease or something that comes and goes. Dyslexia seems to be a cognitive setup, the way the brain is wired. 
so that um, there's no cure in the sense of a magic pill that will make it go away. However, what there are are ways to manage dyslexia, to work with it, to learn how to, to strategize, to minimize it and to manage situations where the dyslexia would otherwise be more of a problem. And the outcome of that is that a dyslexic person finds life and various tasks much easier.